This is the fully custom written, custom built, and live in production e-commerce site that I've been working on. It is completely open source. I've linked down below the full repo for this site. You guys are free to use it. Uh, the only things you can't use are like the branding and the images and all that stuff, but that's self-explanatory. As far as the code and all that stuff goes, you are free to use it. And today I wanna to show you guys all the different pieces of technology which I used to build and deploy this. The core of what this site was built on is SvelteKit. I'm using this for both the front end and the back end. I really like full stack JS. I like end to end type safety and I really like the patterns SvelteKit uses. We are going to have deep dives coming very soon on all the different pieces of this stack and this framework and how we built them. I'm gonna vid have videos going over the authentication, the data layer, the data model, the image system, all these different things to make this work. And SvelteKit is at the core of these. I really like this framework. I've got other videos going into why I think it's so damn good, but I definitely recommend you give this a shot. The next piece, which I would argue is one of the most important pieces is our database of choice. I went with PlanetScale. PlanetScale is generally speaking my favorite database these days. The main reason for that is because, not just because it has really good scalability, it's very reliable and it's MySQL, but all the features they have built around it are really, really helpful and I really like using. The stuff they have in here like data branching, uh, their impressive monitoring systems, and the fact that they have a really strong serverless driver, which we'll talk about in the data layer video. But effectively, that just means that I can connect to my database over HTTP instead of making a full MySQL connection is huge for performance. If you go on the site, you'll notice it's really, really performant and really fast. And that is mostly thanks to both Planet Scale and the ORM we're using. The ORM of choice here is Drizzle. This is how we're interfacing with our database, how we're fetching all of our data, getting types on it. Um, I, in the past, have been a huge fan of Prisma. I still am, uh, but generally speaking these days, I've been going with Drizzle. It works incredibly well in serverless environments. It's super lightweight. It just, it works really well. It's got an amazing built-in, it's got an amazing system for connecting to and working with Planet Scale. The whole thing's awesome, and you'll hear more about that in the deep dive on the data layer. In order to make this site actually look good, we used two things. The first thing was Shad CN for Svelte. This gave us a bunch of built-in components to start building our UI. I've never been a particularly talented UI guy myself, so having something like this where I can just go in here and I can grab like a little badge or something, or I can grab a card or something along these lines and start fitting these little building blocks together to create a UI was fantastic. It's really helpful for prototyping and building things out. And then for the actual styling too, we, we use Tailwind CSS obviously, um, that's kind of the standard these days. I really like it. I think it makes me really fast. I really enjoy using it. While the end product did not end up using nearly as many Shad CN components as like the early versions did, we got super custom later on. Uh, you'll still notice it if you go through the site. You're going to see like some cards in there. You're going to see some inputs. There's there's remnants of it in there and it um, made a huge difference. I highly recommend using this. For the authentication layer, I used Lucia. Lucia is an authentication library. It's not a full authentication provider like Clerk or Aussie or anything like that. It's a library which gives us a bunch of really useful functions and adapters to get authentication running quickly and correctly um, fast, but it also doesn't fully own our auth. So I'm not sending my, you know, all the authentication stuff still lives in our database. We're using an adapter for Drizzle and SvelteKit. Uh, the authentication deep dive will get deep into how all this stuff works. We're only using OAuth because personally, I kind of hate email password. I don't want your password. Users don't want to make a password. Passwords are always terrible. So I will let Google handle that. And we're just going to have a sign in with Google button. Uh, next up, we have Cloudinary. Cloudinary is actually the sponsor of this whole project and this series of deep dives and all these things that we're doing for this project. Um, I picked the stack before I had even talked to anyone at Cloudinary. I've been using them at work for like a year. It's a fantastic platform. You'll see when we get into the deep dive just how important having something like this is. When we first put the site live, we didn't have optimized images and we didn't have everything correct. And I think our network payload was something like, a, like it was almost half a gig of just giant 4K images. So Cloudinary has been excellent for getting those optimized down. They have a brand new SvelteKit SDK, which works really, really well. Uh, we use them for also the admin side of things for uploading and managing all of our images. Uh, just having all of that handled is a godsend. I've dealt with custom images before. It sucks for a project like this. I'm happy to be using a provider like Cloudinary. Next up, the payment backbone for this site is Stripe. Stripe ended up making the most sense for this project. 
Uh, you could definitely argue that Shopify is ideal for this kind of thing, but I wanted to do something that's a little more primitive and also is more applicable to like SaaS and that kind of thing, uh, where Stripe, you have to do things a little bit more custom, but I think that their sort of system of doing things with webhooks and all that kind of thing, um, you can really own your payments heavily. Uh, I'll describe it a lot more when we get into the payments deep dive, but there is, um, you know, everyone's heard of and used Stripe. Their checkout system is fantastic. If you look at the site, the Stripe checkout works really, really well. We fulfill everything through webhooks. It's a great system. Next for our email system, we are using Resend. Uh, I've tried a bunch of different email providers. The reason why we're using Resend is because A, they have a really good system, a great SDK, good UI. It's an excellent company I recommend using. But a huge part of it too is the fact that they support and use a package called React Email. We will talk about this in the emails deep dive, but there are React files in my Spellkit project. And the reason for that is to make email not be completely and utterly atrocious to work with. Email has notoriously been painful, and while this doesn't solve everything about it, it certainly makes it less painful to deal with. So resend feels pretty good. Um, you know, it's still email, but as far as email goes, it's pretty good. And finally, to host this thing, put it in production, we're using Vercel. They own Svelkit. They have excellent infra, excellent CI CD, excellent DX. It just makes the most sense for us to host our project here. Uh, we can utilize things like um, ISR and stuff like that, which we're not currently utilizing, but probably eventually will to optimize things down. Uh, they have a great built in analytics tool. It just makes the most sense for us to put this in production on Vercel. And that's what we're going to be covering in this series. So that's the stack we're using to build this. Like I said, it is completely open source. Uh, it's linked down below. You just can't use the assets. I'm going to have a video coming very soon where we're going to go through and actually um, imp like get it running on a new machine. So I'm going to go through and show you how to set up the Stripe account, how to set up the uh, Cloudinary account, how to get the project set up, how to put in all your ENV variables, get everything working. I currently have a guide for that within the readme of the project, but there's definitely more context that we need to put in there so that will get a full video on its own. Then we will go into the full deep dives on how each of these pieces is working, the authentication layer, the storage layer, or the data layer, which is database and ORM, the email system, the payment system, et cetera. We're gonna have all those videos coming very soon. So if you liked this and you wanna see those, make sure you subscribe and I will talk to you soon.